Welcome, all my fellow Washington brethren and sister. I am your man and resident Washington football team fan, Lou. Thank you for joining me here on the Washington Football Report. So, live, by the way. Now, this is a quick one. I'm not going to be here too long. I don't want to keep you guys here longer than I need to. Um, honestly, I wanted this video to come out way earlier. Just had a lot of stuff going on. I didn't even want to really bump heads with the Monday night game because I want to watch that myself. I'm going to do my podcast live after tonight's Monday night game. So if you're interested in that, uh, stay tuned a little bit later on to the Louis T Network as I will be live for the podcast. I will break down all of the preseason games, all, what, 14 of them that were over this weekend, including the Monday night game. So I'll do that a little bit later on tonight on the podcast. But uh, the, the real reason I brought you guys here is to talk about a multitude of topics. Um, obviously, you heard the news today about Steven Sims Jr. getting released by the team. We talked about that after the preseason game on Friday, that that was pretty much his death sentence with this team. It was not a great performance by Steven Sims Jr. And you could tell that the writing was on the wall then. And they just went ahead and said, hey, we're going to give you an opportunity, just like they did with Kelvin Harmon, to latch on somewhere else. We'll talk more about that move in a little bit. We'll talk about what Ron said after the game, what Ron said on Sunday uh, or Saturday morning uh, during his presser. And then we'll talk about practice today. And I thought there were some really good tidbits from Ron uh, throughout the weekend and into today. So uh, we'll talk about all of those things. We'll talk about more roster moves potentially coming down the pipeline. The roster will be trimmed again as you have to get down to the league mandated amount. So look for some more guys to be cut. Uh, and, and so we'll talk about all of those things and then some, uh, but we're going to take care of some house cleaning first. So um, the YouTube join is up. It is official. The Mob Squad's new home is here on the Louis T Network. So if you want to become a member of the Mob Squad, you now have the ability to do so. Uh, the join button is right there on the uh, every video that I do. There will be a join button there. If you go to the uh, homepage on YouTube, the Louis T Network homepage, there's a join button there as well. So a multitude of ways to join the Mob Squad. I've gone through all of the different perks and levels and things of that nature uh, in the video, um, the, the squad, the mount up video that I did, squad up, Mob Squad video. So check that out if you want to know exactly what you're getting yourself into and if it's something you're interested in doing uh, to begin with. But um, it's available now. I'm still working out some of the kinks and I, I, I was trying to I look I'm not a tech savvy guy. I never tried to pretend that I was and I'm never going to be a, a super tech savvy guy. You know, I, I get the job done and I, I do just enough to get by. I was going to, you know, try to work in discord and all of that. And I, I said, nah, I don't want to. I want everything to be housed here on YouTube. I don't want people to have to go elsewhere. I want everything to be here. That's the point of bringing it here is I don't want people outsourcing all over the place. Everything's here. One stop shop. You don't have to go anywhere. You get everything you need right here on the Louis T Network on YouTube. So that's how I want to run the, the organization. That's how this mob business is going to be taken care of. It's going to be done right here on the Louis T Network. So I want to say uh, thank you. I have my first member. Uh, Quaface15025, thank you and welcome to the Mob Squad. Thank you for your uh, membership and I uh, appreciate you becoming a member of the Mob. Hashtag stand up. Quadface, uh, Quaface15025, you in the building. So thank you so much for your membership. So um, that is available. Now we can talk about all of the things that have transpired over the last 72 hours or so with this football team. So I want to start with Saturday's presser, you know, the day after the game. I thought Ron had some very revealing um, comments. And he, he's, done, he's done this before. After the first game, I thought he was pretty revealing in some of the things that he said. Uh, he was very candid, um, you know, no filter in terms of how he felt. He spoke candidly about what he thought players did, through, you know, in the game and, and where they needed to improve and things of that nature. Kind of did the same thing here. Um, got another member, Keenan Bates. Thank you for your membership. Welcome to the Mob Squad, Keenan Bates. So 
he talked about treating this upcoming game versus the Ravens like a regular season week of preparation. So they're going to they're gonna put in install. They're going to have an actual game plan. Again, it's not going to be anything elaborate. Okay, don't, don't get too carried away thinking, oh my God, this Scott Turner play calling stinks, all that stuff that you guys love to do when it doesn't go right. They're not going to put all of the intricate details into the game planning. Trust me, they're already planning for the, the Chargers week one. They, they're looking past the Ravens, but they're going to put in little details into this week's game plan to give these guys a feel for what it's going to be like uh, when the season gets here, for especially the newcomers who aren't accustomed to a, a regimented schedule that sets you up going into the week week's game. So uh, he wants to simulate that this week. So trust me, the starters are going to play. How long? I still don't know. I'm going to trust. I'm going to take it like I did the first two games and just say on a, as on a need to play basis. So if they play well early, they're going to come out early. If they, they struggle, like the offense, for instance, they struggled in this past game. If they struggle again, they're going to stay in. Maybe even longer than the defense. So we'll, we'll see how they decide to do it. Got another member. Uh, this is a silver member. Dwight Phillips, thank you and welcome to the Mob Squad. Stand up, Dwight, Keenan, Quaface, you're all in the building. Thank you for your membership. So when you look at this week's game, keep in mind that they're trying to prepare themselves as if this is a regular season game. I think they're going to treat this as the dress rehearsal, which I think every team should do. And um, don't forget, we're go I'm going to give away two tickets to this Ravens game, okay? So I'm going to have a video tomorrow that will pretty much be the impetus for you guys' ability to, um, and I'll give you all the directions in that video. If you're interested in going to that Ravens preseason game, preseason finale, I've got two tickets to that game. And uh, I'll give you all the instructions tomorrow. There will be a video specifically for that purpose. And if you're interested, I'll give you the directions then. But uh, they're treating this week like it's a game prep week for the Ravens, like it's a regular season game. I thought that was interesting. He also talked about, I thought this was a great question from J.P. Finley, um, who said, asked Ron about draft picks and whether draft picks have a little bit more standing and leeway to make the roster than a guy that isn't a draft pick. So case in point, an example would be two guys are even. One's a draft pick, one's not a draft pick. So we could say, let's just throw out, for instance, AGG and Cam Sims, both vying for one spot. That's not the case. You guys know that Cam Sims is firmly on this roster. And I've already told you, I think AGG is on this roster. And I told you that from the beginning. They're not cutting him, I don't think. But let's just go with the assumption that those two were pitted against one another and they were battling for one spot. Ron essentially said, because Cam Sims is the undrafted guy, Ron has no ties to him. Ron had nothing to do with him being on the roster. Ron got here and Cam Sims was already a part of the team, whereas AGG was a draft pick. Ron did have something to do with it. Ron and his brass at the time selected AGG. Scott Turner specifically wanted AGG. So there is a little bit of investment into AGG. They spent a fourth round draft pick on him. So JP Finley essentially asked, does that draft pick get a little bit more leeway? Does that guy have a better shot come this time of the year than the undrafted guy? And to that question, Ron responded with, yeah, one year. There's a one-year grace period. When you draft a guy, you don't want to cut guys that you draft. You want to give them an opportunity. So for the Dax Milnes of the world, for the Derek Forces who are on the bubble, they want to give those guys every opportunity to make the team. But obviously you're not going to keep those guys over a player that you believe can help you not only this year, but into the future. Case in point, 
If they really felt that way, then Dax Milne would get the nod over Adam Humphreys because Adam Humphreys is a stopgap. He's probably just going to be here this year and he's not going to be a part of future plans. That's why they drafted Dax Milne to take over the slot duties once Adam Humphreys is gone. We think Adam Humphreys, who signed a one-year deal, is going to be gone next year. So you can't just say it's, it's you know, based off of right now because if it was based off of, or into the future, I should say, because if, if, if you're taking into the future into account, then you would think that Dax Milne would get the nod over a guy like Adam Humphreys. That said, Ron said you get one year of a grace period. For a guy like AGG, this is year two for him. You don't get a second year grace period. He said at some point you have to admit you made a mistake and you got to move on. So last year, AGG, you know, got a pass even though he didn't do anything in camp. He didn't necessarily do anything to warrant a roster spot. But we spent the fourth round pick. We're not going to cut you. We're going to give you an opportunity. This year, they were looking at AGG and they're saying, hey, bruh, we loved you. That's why we drafted you. But we got other guys here that are being, that are playing well and that are competing. If you can't hold it down and show us why we drafted you, we're going to have to move on. So they made, he made that abundantly clear. I thought that was a really telling point there. And uh, I think AGG is a guy that is going to continue to make this football team, as I've stated already. Uh, th uh, thank you to Gunny Man. Uh, welcome to the Mob Squad, Gunny Man. Greatly appreciate you. Stand up, Gunny Man. You're in the building and you're a member of the Mob. Uh, he also referenced the offensive uh, production over the first two preseason games. Obviously, the first team offense hasn't scored a touchdown. The lone touchdown scored, um, or the two touchdowns, we scored a touchdown offensively in each of the first two preseason games, but both by... Um, different parts of the team. So I take that back. We scored three touchdowns in the first two preseason games. We scored two against New England, one uh, with Taylor Heineke and the second team offense right before halftime. And then uh, Steven Montez let us down on a drive late in the ball game with the touchdown pass to uh, running back Lamar Miller uh, in the preseason game against the Patriots. And then we scored one touchdown. Um, let's see with the offense we scored two touchdowns i think excuse me what did we score 17 points 17 13 was the score i believe yeah so we had to have no we got three dustin hopkin field goals so yeah one touchdown the one touchdown was a touchdown run by Jarrett patterson then we got the two-point conversion from agg and then we had three dustin hopkin field goals so We've scored a total of three touchdowns. None of them have come from the first team offense. And so there's been a lot of questions about, are you satisfied with what you've gotten out of the offense? Uh, the, the yardage is there, but the points aren't there. You're not finishing drives. You know, are you disappointed? What are you looking for? This, that, and the third. And he said, he talked about a, a number of different things. He's like, it's a miss here. It's a mess there. You know, for an example, in the last game against Cincinnati, we, we failed to convert on a fourth down. You know, that, that stopped the drive. You got a, a wide open Logan Thomas on an out route. He, if, if he's hit in stride, it's a first down. He's going to turn up the field and get the first down. But Fitz misses him. Uh, you got an opportunity to hit Diami down the field. He misses him. Uh, Terry screaming wide open. I went back and watched the game a second time on, on a play where he decides to go to Adam Humphreys underneath. Adam Humphreys thinks that uh, the defender's there, so I'm going to stop and... and Fitzpatrick expects him to keep going, so he throws it. It's incomplete. It, it looks out of sync. Uh, but Terry's screaming open over the top, beats the uh, slot receipt, uh, DB, the nickelback, right off the line of scrimmage. The safety's cheating to the opposite side of the field. So if you get it to Terry right now, it's a potential 75-yard touchdown right there. Bam. So th there, it's just a lot of little things like that you need to iron out. In the, in, and Fitz will see that. You know, they'll go back and watch tape and he'll see, oh man, I missed an opportunity. And maybe the next time they get a look like that, he'll look for Terry instead of looking to Adam Humphreys right away. So just a little, a lot of little things like that where the offense is out of sync. You, you missed the opportunity on the fourth down. Speaking of that fourth down miss, he talked about Gibby and he said, wanting to see Gibby become a complete back. And one of the things that you have to do when you're a complete back is you have to be able to pick up 
yardage on you know short yardage situations third and one third and two fourth and one and he specifically did not put Peyton Barber in the game because he wanted to see if Gibby could do it and Gibby didn't do it now he's not going to stop trying Gibby in those situations but he does want to see if he can handle those responsibilities got another new member Enigma RJ, welcome to the Mob Squad. You are a gold member. Thank you for being the first gold member, Enigma RJ. Greatly appreciate you. Stand up, Enigma RJ. You are officially a member of the Mob Squad and definitely in the building. Thank you so much, Enigma RJ. So he talked about wanting to get Gibby to have no hesitation to hit the hole hard and find a way to convert those fourth down and third down short yardage situations. So that's something else we need to watch. Gibby didn't think he did anything wrong in that play. When you listen to Gibby after the game, he said, I didn't hesitate. I hit it. I, I thought I was going to get it and I just didn't, you know, um, and, and Rivera seems to think differently. So obviously there, there's a, a little bit of a disconnect there and, and he'll probably get with Gibby and, and running backs coach Randy Jordan and they'll discuss that and figure out what's a better way for him to, to go about that. But again, that's why it is imperative that Peyton Barber be on this football team because, you know, it, it's one thing in the preseason to be trying things out. We get into the regular season. I don't really want to hear about we're trying to figure this out with this guy or that guy. If you know you got a guy that gets it done in those situations, put him in the game, and you can even use that to your advantage because if the defense sees that guy in the game and they know he's the hammer, he's the guy they give it to in these short yardage situations, then you go play action fake. Got him because they're going to sell out for run. So I think there are ways you can utilize that to your advantage. And Ron talked about wanting Gibby to become a complete back and, and be able to pick those. Remember, Gibby's in year two of this transformation into a full-time NFL starting running back. So got to give him this opportunity to continue to grow. Um, so let's get to Monday's practice. Um, let's start out with the house cleaning for uh, Monday's practice and the, and the housekeeping, if you will. Deami Brown, Cam Curl, no practice today. Those were two DMPs. They both were out with illnesses. Got any grapes? Thank you for uh, your membership. Welcome to the Mob Squad. Got any grapes? Stand up. Got any grapes? You are officially in the building. Thank you so much. Um, you talked about those two in particular having an illness, they'll be fine. They should be back at practice tomorrow, so not anything to really be concerned about. We go from two guys that did not practice today in Cam Curl and De'Ami Brown to two guys that did practice, and these are some big names. One in particular, both tight ends were back. Both guys were out last week with concussions. Tamarick Hemingway missed the entire week with a concussion. He was back on the practice field today, and along with him, our guy, Samis Reyes, back on the practice field in full participation. That was a sight for sore eyes. I didn't know how long he would be out for, did not play in the game. That was a minor setback for him. Uh, Ron even talked about it like, hey, you know, we're going to get to that in a second. Guys that he's been impressed with, uh, Samis Reyes, one of those guys. He really wanted to see him in the last game, as did I. Remember when we talked about you know, things we were going to be looking for in the next game. I told you guys flat out one of the biggest things I was looking for was seeing the growth and development of Samis Reyes. Well, he didn't play, so that was a bit of a bummer. That said, he was back out on the field today, so that's trending in the right direction for him to be available on Saturday night or Saturday evening when Washington takes on the Baltimore Ravens. So that is a very good look uh, as we try to prepare for uh, what I think is ultimately going to be the dress rehearsal game against the Baltimore Ravens. More news with the roster and players participating. Uh, Curtis Samuel, guy that's been off to the side field. William Jackson, who did not participate in Friday uh, night's game against Cincinnati. Casey Tuhill, who has not played in a single preseason game to this point, all still working off on the side field. Two Hill with the toe. Jackson, I don't even know what his ailment is, to be honest with you. I know at one point it was like a quad, I think. Maybe it's still, I, I know one time, I think it was his hammy. Um, I know he had a charley horse. I don't know what the hell it is. 
I just know he's out, but he's off on the side field working. Same with Curtis Samuel. And Ron just continues to talk about, hey, we're going to bring these guys along slowly. Uh, got another um, member here, Chilled Dude. Thank you for your membership. Greatly appreciate you, Chilled Dude. Stand up. You are officially a member of the Mob, mob Squad and definitely in the building. Got any grapes? Want to go ahead and give you a huge big ups for upgrading your membership to silver. Thank you so much. Got any grapes? Greatly appreciate you. You are in the building as a silver member. Um, got another member, Abner Duran. Gold membership. Thank you so much, Abner, my guy from Mexico. Abner Duran, stand up. You are officially a member of the Mob Squad and definitely in the building. Thank you so much. So those guys are still off on the side field. Two Hill, I feel like is running out of time to make this roster. And again, he's going to be on the practice squad if he doesn't make the team. I don't think anybody else is snatching up Casey Two Hill. So if he doesn't make the team initially, doesn't mean he's going very far. I think they'll feel comfortable not having him on the squad. If they love him, he'll be on the squad regardless of him not, you know, being, you know, in any of the preseason games. But if they, they think, okay, we got another guy that we really like, we're going to give him the nod early on, Two Hill will be right there on the practice squad. And if they feel like the other guy isn't giving them anything, they can always pull Casey Two Hill up and, and send that guy down. Uh, whatever the case may be, uh, with William Jackson, Curtis Samuel, I am not concerned at all. They, like Ron said, we've got 21 days when he said that. We've got three weeks still left until the game against the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. So I'm not concerned. Those guys will be ready. Worst case scenario, they don't play in the game against the Ravens. I don't think Curtis Samuel is playing in the game, period. I don't think he's playing in the preseason at all. William Jackson, that, that's, that remains to be seen. I think they're going to err on the side of caution with him as well. They just want these guys to be healthy come week one. So I don't think we'll see either one of those guys. Uh, th those aren't big deals. The, the guys that we want to see are the guys that are trying to make this team like Sammy Reyes. Those are the guys we need to be concerned with. And it looks like he's trending towards playing. Um, Steven Sims Jr. released. We talked about that already. I led the show with that. Um, we saw this one coming a mile away. We talked about his performance against Cincinnati, which just wasn't good enough. He, he alligator armed the ball. Um, he didn't do anything in the returns game. They gave him opportunities there. He just simply did not stand out uh, amongst a group that was deep. And he was already behind the eight ball because he was so disappointing last year. We all sense that the end was near for him coming into camp. He was going to have to be otherworldly to make this football team, and he hasn't been that. He's been solid. He can help a team, and like we said before, he can help a team in this league. It's not like before where we were cutting guys that shouldn't be in the league. He can help someone else. Ron just gave him an early opportunity to latch on somewhere else to maybe help another team. So um, got another um, – got another – Member, new member, Washington f football fan, W-G-I-L. Thank you for the membership. Greatly appreciate you, my guy, Washington football fan, W. Gill. Stand up. You are officially a member of the Mob Squad. And a big shout out to Gunny Man for upgrading his membership to gold status. You are now officially a gold member and definitely in the building. Thank you to Gunny Man and welcome to all of you who have become members uh, to this point. So you get to the release of, of Steven Sims Jr. It trims the room down to now 10 wide receivers, okay? Remember, six is the number. Six is the magic number for the wide receiver group. Uh, I think, I, I've, you know who my six are, and I've heard who a lot of you think are gonna be the six that you've selected. Uh, we'll see, it still remains to be seen what they decide to do. Uh, there's another round of cuts coming this week to, to trim the number down. I believe the number needs to be down to 80 uh, after Tuesday. So there should be another four cuts or so coming for Washington to get the number down to 80. And then once they get the number down to 80, you go from 80 to 53. So um, I don't think any more of the cuts are coming from the wide receiver room. I think the next round of cuts are going to be coming from safety, guys like Cole Luke and guys like that. I think that's the next round of cuts that you'll see. Maybe, you know, a, a couple of obscure offensive linemen here, 
a, a couple of guys because you're going to see a lot more of the starters in this game, so you don't need as many of the backup guys. You don't need as many of the, the third stringers. So a lot of those guys will be the names you start to hear called when we talk about cuts uh, tomorrow. Uh, it won't be any of the guys that they still, you know, are taking a look at. They're, they're, they're wondering if we should keep this guy on the practice squad. They're mulling over decisions like that. You won't see any of those guys cut. So the receiver room is now down to 10. The 10 players are Terry McLaurin, uh, Deami Brown, Curtis Samuel, Adam Humphreys, Cam uh, Sims, You've got uh, AGG, you've got um, Dax Milne, you've got Isaiah Wright, you've got Tony Brown, and you've got one more, DeAndre Carter. Those are your 10 guys in the room uh, right now. You know what I wanted to ask you guys? I, and I wish somebody would ask Ron this. You think that Curtis Samuel could return punts? Obviously, he hasn't done anything in the preseason. I don't know if they want to put a guy as valuable as him back on punt returns or not. But I was wondering, could you put, couldn't you just put him back there on punts? I'm pretty sure he's done it before. I don't know. I'm just talking out loud. Um, they've got to figure that out because I don't think DeAndre Carter's making the football team. So they got to figure that out, who they're going to put on punts. And I don't think Danny Johnson is going to make the team either. And if that's the case, you got to find out who you're going to put on punt returns. And I don't think Dax Mill is making the team, even though Ron seems to really like this guy a lot, which I'm glad he does because he's a part of the future here in Washington. But I don't think he's making the team. So somebody's got to return punts. I don't know. We'll find out. Anyway, I digress. Um, and then R R Rivera mentioned players who have stood out in the first two preseason games. And he mentioned... All, the, all of them by number. He also talked about the offensive line and some guys that stepped up there, but he didn't mention anybody in particular. He singled out these players. And it was my guy, Metaphor, who made a great point because we were talking about uniform numbers and how I thought that, you know, Jared Patterson's number was ugly. We got to get him into something more clean and wholesome and easy on the eyes than 35. And he said, well, he's actually a, a, a numberless player. Because we've got two 35s. I didn't even think about that. He's absolutely right. Metaphor was spot on when he said that in the comment section. We've got Tory McTire who's going to make this football team at the cornerback position wearing 35. And we've got Jarrett Patterson on the offensive side of the football wearing 35. Both of them can't be 35. One of them will probably keep 35. The other will get a different jersey number. So uh, that'll be interesting to see what happens there. But he, he said 35. And then he said, oh, well, both 35s. Okay. 30, which is Troy Apke, so 35, uh, Torrey McTire, 35, Jarrett Patterson, 30, Troy Apke. Told you guys Troy Apke's making his team. And Ron even went out of his way to offer this up. Hey, or, or I think John Kahn or somebody um, actually threw this in and he, he elaborated on it, but he said, yeah, special teams is a huge part of it. Like, this dude's a core special teamer and he's the best we got. Like, it, it's not even up for debate, essentially, is what Ryan was saying. Like, you can't find guys like Troy Apke who are special teams fiends. And I told you, you got to have a fiend and a half. Well, he's an entire fiend by himself. He might even qualify for a full fiend and a half by himself. He's that good. So he's not going anywhere. And he's improving at the cornerback position. We'll talk about that a little bit later here on this breakdown. But... Um, he also said 18, which was surprising, Isaiah Wright, because we haven't really heard much from Isaiah Wright. Really hasn't made a lot of plays. Ron continues to go out of his way to give him credit. And then he said 80, which is Samis Reyes. And he's like, despite not seeing him last game, would have loved to have seen him out there. Uh, 80 has been really impressive. I uh, want to see him in the game against the Ravens because that's a physical football team. So we're really going to get a good look at him in that game if he is healthy. So uh, those are the guys that he mentioned as players that have stepped up, that have caught their eye as a staff. Those guys have a, a tremendous ch uh, chance of making the team. I think all of them except Isaiah Wright at this point. I, I just don't see Isaiah Wright making this team, even though I know they love him on special teams. I don't think there is any space on this roster for him at this current juncture. But again, he's one of those guys that won't go very far. He'll be on the practice squad, and if they need him, he'll just be a, a rock throw away from being back on the active 53-man uh, roster. So um, 
I got a couple more memberships to announce, actually a few more memberships to announce. My guy Barrett Downing, thank you for this um thank you for the membership BD. Greatly appreciate you as always, my guy Barrett Downing. Welcome. Stand up, you are officially a member of the Mob Squad and definitely in the building, my guy Barrett Downing. Thank you so much. Brendan McCloskey, same thing. Welcome. And thank you for your membership. Stand up, Brendan McCloskey. You are now officially a member of the Mob Squad. Greatly appreciate your gold membership, Brendan McCloskey. Thank you so much. Definitely in the building. One Sixth Devil Doc. Thank you for your membership. Greatly appreciate you as you are a silver member. And remember, all silver and gold members will get shout outs every single video so you guys stand up you are officially in the building one sixth devil doc stand up my guy you are officially a member of the mob squad and definitely in the building thank you for your membership so um as far as practice is concerned today troy atke with two interceptions not one but two interceptions today He's continuing to improve and impress. I told you I was not deterred watching him out there. That pass interference, it was this close to Troy Apke making a hell of a play. I thought Troy Apke had some really good coverage on Friday night. I am impressed with his development as a corner. I must say, I did not expect this. And maybe he's been playing the wrong position all along. You know, maybe he's a, a new dunny. Where Dunny was a receiver, gets to the NFL, Jay Gruden says, you know what, you probably make a good corner, flips him, and Dunny made a living in this league for a number of years as a corner. Maybe Abke was playing the wrong position the entire time. Who knows, we'll see, but it's good to know. We'll continue to see him develop because he's making his football team as a core special teamer. And uh, hopefully we never have to see him in the game as a corner, okay? Let's hope that that's the case. We never have to find out if, if the, the experiment is going well, but... Uh, nonetheless, it's good to know that it is going somewhat well as we continue to hear him making plays in practice. Cole Holcomb had a pick of Ryan Fitzpatrick in red zone drills as well. So the defense stepping up, uh, the offense had their fair share of plays that they made. But again, uh, we've talked about this all camp. We've talked about this all preseason. The defense is ahead of the offense. And Ron would not go as far as to uh, announce Ryan Fitzpatrick is the starting quarterback. Ryan Fitzpatrick is the starting quarterback. You guys, I think you have figured that out by now. They haven't been flip-flopping, you know, who goes first, who starts the game with the ones. None of that, none of that is taking place. Ryan Fitzpatrick has been with the ones the entire preseason, the entire training camp. There is no debate here to be had. Ron's like, I have no ben there's no benefit to me announcing who the starting quarterback is right now, but I mean you guys can kind of read between the lines you know what time it is but he he wants to see this group continue to work to iron out some of the things that have held them back in in some of these preseason games and and not allow them to get into the end zone and logan thomas talked about that at, at uh after practice today he stepped up to the podium and he said look you know it's one thing here he's like i missed a block last game that that killed the drive you know, we had some, you know, inaccuracies and things that happened. It's always one thing. It's just one thing. And that's all it takes to mess the drive up. You know, you get to third down. It's third and manageable. You need a play to be made. And if all 11 guys aren't on the same page, you know, there's the end of a drive just like that. So, um, and that's really what it's been. I, I, I haven't watched either one of these first two preseason games and said, man, this offense stinks. It, it looks nothing like last year. It looks nothing like the year before. This is a competent NFL offense, and they're moving the football. Had a big play to De'Ami Brown last game. Had a nice throw to Terry the, the game before that. Had a nice throw to Logan Thomas in that same Patriots game. Like, they're moving the football. We're getting chunk plays, which is something we didn't get last year, okay? We're picking up first downs, multiple first downs on these drives. We're just not finishing them with touchdowns. That's where we're missing out right now, so... Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens when they decide to put a little bit more game planning in this week and see if they can find a way when they get into the red zone. I, I assume that there'll be a little bit more red zone work, try to punch it in when they get down there. But it hasn't always been red zone issues 
You know, all of our uh, drives stalling out haven't been red zone stall outs. You know, we failed on a, a fourth down, uh, a third down, excuse me, a third and one against the Patriots. We failed on a fourth down against the uh, fourth down and one against the, the, the Bengals. So, and th that's a trend around the league right now is, is that it's so vanilla that on fourth down and one, you know, last year at one point, fourth down and one was a passing down for a lot of teams, for most of the teams in the league. 97%, and I'm, this is an uh, uh, arbitrary number. This is the number I'm just throwing out. I can't confirm nor deny this number, but I've watched all the preseason games to this point of the preseason. And there have been a slew of fourth and third and ones, okay? I'm talking at least 50 of them between all of the preseason games. I venture to say at least 42 to 45 of them have been runs. Not a lot of play action fake passes or you come out and gun and, and you throw it. It's been a lot of gun runs and it's been a lot of under center runs. And a lot of teams are getting stuffed because guess what? The other team knows you're running it. It's preseason. They know you're not going to get too creative. So everybody's stacking the line. They're selling out for run and they're right because everybody's running. And there's a lot of teams getting stuffed. Not now. No excuses. I don't care if the other team, this is when you know you can run the football. When the other team knows it's coming and they still can't stop it, that's when you know you got an operation that is a, a bunch of man movers. They're a moving company. We don't have a moving company, okay? You don't call our guys when you're looking to have some things moved. So I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Anyway, I digress. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing about the, the next wave of cuts, looking forward to hearing what they're going to do. Ron will not commit to Jarrett Patterson quite yet, but he's making a football team. We're, we all know he's making a football team. Now, in what capacity? I can tell you this. I think Jarrett Patterson, with one more good showing on kickoff returns, he's all but cinched that as a kickoff return man. I think Ron was uber impressed with him as a, as a kickoff return man. Um, Obviously, he has never, he hasn't done punt returns, so I don't think he's going back there. Uh, if he doesn't go th there against the Ravens, then don't assume to see him there in week one. But I think Jarrett Patterson, if he makes this team, could be active as a kick return man. Now, again, you can only have 46 active on game day. So everybody can't be active. Seven guys are going to be inactive. So... You'd like to think that they're only going to have three guys active at the running back position on a weekly basis. So that's why I keep telling you guys, I'm not sure he's going to be a huge contributor. A lot of you, and Ron already said, we're not changing anything in terms of his role. Like, he is what he is right now. Like, he's not getting any of the first team reps. He's not taking Antonio Gibson's reps. He's not taking J.D. McKissick's reps. He doesn't have Peyton Barber's role on the team. And Peyton Barber's a core special teamer. He's not going to remove anybody from the equation he's he is what he is so if he makes the team he makes it off of his own strength and volition however he's not taking somebody else's spot he's not going to be on the roster at somebody else's expense so a lot of you getting excited on this jared patterson train keep in mind you're not going to see this guy coming in and taking a ton of reps and getting a lot of touches okay so wrap your brain around that the, the, the reason he would make the team is because they're afraid they're going to lose him and they don't want to. They don't want to allow him to go out there because a lot of people whiffed on Jarrett Patterson. Everybody kept saying, oh, he's too small. He's not fast enough. He's not this. He's not that. So everybody passed on him collectively, including us. You know, Ron tried to clean it up. Oh, we had a draftable grade on him. We liked him. Well, you didn't like him enough to draft him. You, you said that we had other needs that were superseded running back, which... He was right about that because I had running back as one of our needs, but it was way down the list. You know, edge rusher came first. I thought they could have doubled up on another linebacker, to be honest with you. So there, there were a number of things that they needed to do, and they did that in the draft. And so he said, we liked him, but we had other needs that came first, and we needed to take care of that long snapper, linebacker, um, obviously edge rusher. We took another receiver. So... They don't want to expose him to the rest of the league because the rest of the league is taking notes as well. And all it takes is one team out there to say, hey, we like this kid too. And we had a draftable, draftable grade on him as well. We missed on him once. We won't pass on him a second time. Washington can't afford to have that happen. So they got to keep him on the roster. Now, 
Obviously, if they could get him to the practice squad, then you could protect him every single week of the season. You get four guys that you can protect every single week. But it's getting him to the practice squad that would be, you know, the biggest issue. So, anyway, I digress. Um, I got another... I got another membership. New member, Hidden Rain, my guy, Pac-Man D3. What up, Pac-Man D3? You're my guy. Really do appreciate you, Pac-Man D3, who is a gold member. Stand up, Pac-Man D3. You are definitely in the building. Welcome to the Mob Squad, Pac-Man D3. Really do appreciate you. So... Uh, with that said, let's get to um, some Super Chats. I see a number of them real quick, and then we'll get out of here. Because, again, I don't want to keep you here longer than I need to. Uh, we'll be live on Wednesday night, and we'll be able to run through a lot of this stuff um, and any up updates that happen with this team. I got a Super Chat here from Landry Balbin. Thank you for the Super Chat, Landry Balbin, greatly appreciate you who writes. Louis, I feel like you're not really a JP guy. That's, that is so false. I am definitely a Jarrett Patterson supporter. Love the fact that he's on this roster. Love what he's done in the preseason. Just because I'm not gushing over him like a lot of you out there and want to see this guy take over for Antonio Gibson because I'm not out of my gourd, I, I understand how this process works. He's a good football player. And people overlooked him because of his size, and he didn't run a 4-4-40. So people overlooked him. But by no means is he better than Antonio Gibson. It's, it, it, it's, by no means is he ready to take over what, uh, what J.D. McKissick does for this football team. You guys just want him to step in and automatically just take over for somebody as if we weren't building something before he got here. So I am a J.P. guy. Don't get it twisted. Once you're a member of this family... Whether I thought of highly of you or not, before you got here, once you get here, you're, I'm a fan of yours because you're a part of the family now. So um, that's wrong. and You couldn't be more further off base. He says, I think after the Bengals game, that changed your mind a bit. No, I, I, I thought he was good against the Patriots. I told you guys I just didn't think he was going to make the team because I thought they were keeping three running backs. I didn't see where four could come in, but then – he's been too good to deny him. I figured we could just get him on the practice squad. What's the big deal? Now, after the Patriots game, it wasn't the Bengals game that sold me. It was the Patriots game. I'm like, man, he wedged his foot in the door. That door is open now. The, Bengal, the Bengals game, he went in. He shut the door. It's locked. Jonathan Williams, ain't no other running backs getting in, but he's not coming out of that room. He's in the, in the room with Antonio Gibson, with J.D. McKissick, and with Peyton Barber. He's not coming out of the room. The door's shut and it's locked. Those guys are in. They're on the roster, and so is he. He says, your praise for Barber is different compared to J.P. because Barber has done it here already, and Barber has carved out a niche for himself. Barber, we put Barber on the field 14 times, and I'm just throwing out a number. I don't know how many times he was on the field in fourth and third and short situations last year. But we put Barber on the field 14 times. I'm going to just throw out a random number. Last year in third and fourth down situations, and the man was 100%, a hundo. Not one time did I walk away from one of those situations saying, damn, Gibby ain't get it done. Or excuse me, damn, Barber ain't get, get it done. Barber ain't trim him up. He ain't give him a cut that time. Every time we got out of the Barber chair, we was fresh to death. When you give me a guy that clearly carves out a niche and an important one at that on the team, and I know I can count on him, what is there to say? What more can I say? I really don't know what else more I need to say. Barber is a necessity because in this league, you need short yardage situations to be converted. And nobody on our team did it better than Peyton Barber. And, I, and again, I haven't seen a guy do it at that clip on this team in forever. Probably got to go back to like Steven Davis. So, yeah, my admiration for Barber is different because I feel like I always got to protect Barber from fans out there who want to cut Barber, who want Barber gone. Why? Why? Because he's averaging 2.7 yards a carry? Yeah, you're going to average 2.7 when you're coming in and you're only coming in to get a yard or two. 
Anyway, I digress. Um, let, uh, I just read that one. Gunny Man, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. My guy, Gunny Man, writes, Barber is, is good as gone, and he wears juice number 25. Um, Barber isn't going anywhere. I, I can't express that enough. He's making his football team. You're, they're keeping four backs. They're going to have to trim off some fat. I've, I've read articles where they've talked about trimming off fat at the offensive line. Instead of going with 10, you go with 9. I've talked about that as well, but I think they're going to go with 10. I think, I think they trim off the fat on the defensive side of the football, but I could be wrong because when the, the numbers don't make sense when you try to trim it off on the, on the defensive side. You've got to trim it off on the offensive side to make it work. And I think offensive line is the most logical place because – David Sharp hasn't participated in, in camp pretty much. He just, that's why they released Steven Sims to activate David Sharp off the COVID-19 list. So they had to make a corresponding move. They did. And that's why Steven Sims Jr. is no longer here. That said, doesn't mean that, that David Sharp is guaranteed a spot. They love Sadiq Charles's um, positional flex. I told you already, he can play four out of the five offensive line positions. You, you put him on the roster along with Cornelius Lucas and you got your two tackles, and, and Cornelius Lucas is right now your swing tackle. So you could theoretically have nine offensive linemen. You don't need another one because you've got a couple of guards in Sadiq Charles and Wes Schweitzer. You've got a couple of tackles in Cornelius Lucas and Sadiq Charles. And then you still have your center in Tyler Lawson. So you got all the, the stuff you need. You got two of everything except for center, and you, you just need one of those. So, and Wes Schweitzer, as I mentioned, he can play center in a pinch. So you got two of everything, essentially, and you got nine guys, and you can do it with nine. So I think, you know, David Sharp could be the odd man out and end up on the practice squad if somebody else doesn't snatch him up. You know, in this league, there's always a, a premium on offensive tackles. So if we cut him, he's probably gone somewhere else, more likely than not. But, you know, I, I, I think if they are looking to trim off the fat to a, to – uh, uh, to be able to fit in that fourth running back, I think offensive line may be the most logical place to do it. We'll see. But uh, I, I don't know who's switching numbers, but obviously Barber was here first. So if Barber wants to wear 25, he was 25 last year, Juice is going to have to get him a new number. It's really simple. Uh, Ovidar the Obtuse, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you, Ovidar. The obtuse writes, I think having to cut players that can potentially produce elsewhere is a good place to be. Remember when Brandon Banks was our best player? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say best player. I don't think Brandon Banks was ever on our roster and the best player. I can tell you this. He was the most exciting player. He was the most exciting player by far on the roster, you know, when he was here at one point. But he wasn't the best player. But you're right. This is a, it's a great place to be when you're cutting guys early. Um, that are probably going to latch on somewhere else and you're cutting them early because you got like five or six other dudes that you just think are better than them. And the guy that you're cutting is actually talented. Yeah, it's a really good place to be. And it's actually foreign territory for us as an organization and us as fans. We haven't been in a, in a spot like this in ages, it feels like. Um, so thank you for that super chat, Overdar, the obtuse. Uh, got one here from Gregory Marston. Thank you for the super chat, Gregory Marston. Greatly appreciate you who writes. What will happen to Milne? He'll get picked up uh, from the practice squad. Humphreys has been hurt in the past years. Can he make it a full season? That, that's the real question. You want to be in a position that if he can't go, if, if he's out for four weeks, you know, with something, and let's hope that that's not the case. But, you know, it's the NFL. Things happen. Dax Mill will be right there ready to step in. You know, if they feel like they need another receiver to come in and fill that void, Mill will be ready to go. I mean, he's proven that in camp, and Rivera is very comfortable with him um, so far, and I think you're going to continue to see that in his final preseason game. So, yeah, I think Mill, if, if he doesn't make the roster, which I don't think he will, uh, but he's making a hard charge. I, I won't count him out, but I don't think he's going to make this football team if he does not make this team practice squad is where I think he'll end up. Obviously, somebody else could, could, could love him. It's hard for me to envision someone else loving Dax Milne uh, because, again, we got him in the seventh, and he hasn't really done a lot in the preseason to warrant 
someone trying to snatch him off of our, our squad, but you just never know, right? I told you somebody's always eyeballing your stuff. Even when you think your stuff is safe, someone's always eyeballing your stuff. So uh, you can never be too sure. But I'd like to think that we could get him to the practice squad and then we'd protect him. He'd be one of the guys you'd protect on a weekly basis. Um, let's see. Got a new uh, member here. New member, Andre D.C. Morrison. Thank you for your membership. Greatly appreciate you becoming a silver member of the Mob Squad. Andre D.C. Morrison, stand up. You are officially a member of the Mob Squad and definitely in the building. Really do appreciate you, Andre D.C. Morrison. Uh, got a super chat from my guy JP here who writes, thank you first and foremost for the super chat, JP. Greatly appreciate you. I'll be at the game week one, so I'll find out firsthand if fans are buying into this organization again. But just uh, like you, I'm all in on Ron's plan. And I think that's essentially what we'll find out early in the season. And, and, and it won't always, it won't be just evident week one, Chargers game, this, that, and the third. You, you, you have to see it over the, the life of the season. Obviously, if things go well, there'll be even more fans at the game, and there'll be less of the opposing fans uh, uh, infiltrating the stadium. Uh, but if things don't go well, you could easily see it kind of revert back to where, the way it was because fans are fickle. You know that. Uh, you win, and they jump on the bandwagon. You lose, and they find something else to do. So um, I think we'll be able to gauge – where we are at the start of the season based off of what they did last year. Like how many people have bought back in or, and are really intrigued. That's the word I keep hearing with Washington fans. We're intrigued. We think there's something building here. We want to see more. We're not sold yet, but we're intrigued. You've piqued our interest. Well, let's see how far that goes because we got a West Coast team that shouldn't have a ton of fans infiltrating our building but we've seen it before where a rando fan base like Indianapolis has come into FedEx and had plenty of their fans cheering for their team. That shouldn't happen here. And that's closer. It's a Midwest team, the Indianapolis Colts. But the Chargers have no business. They can't even fill up their own stadium. So if they come to FedEx and there's a large population of them, that, that's, that's problematic. It really is. So we'll see. And I'll be looking from the, for that report from you, J.P., Come week number one. Got another super chat from JP. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, thank you for doubling up, JP. Greatly appreciate you. Who writes, could Deami Brown be a starter down the road? Yeah, he's going to start this year at some point. I mean, there'll be times when Washington comes out in a, you know, three wide receiver set and he'll be starting then. Like, he'll be a starter for sure. You know, whether, you know, it's, uh, you know, three wide receivers set, two wide receivers. He started the game this past week against the Bengals. It was him and Terry. I was so shocked at how many different positions they put him in. And he talked about that after the game. Like, yeah, you know, they're trusting me to put me in different positions. I only played pretty much one position. That was the X at North Carolina. So, you know, it's, it's a lot more that they're putting on my plate. But, you know, they're moving me around. I was shocked. They had him all over the place. Now, primarily a lot of his reps came at X, but they moved him around. I was shocked. Got another new member, my guy, Sean Hawk. Thank you for the membership. Greatly appreciate you. Hawk, Hawk, Hawk. Hawk, stand up. You are officially a member of the Mob Squad and definitely in the building as a gold member, Sean Hawk. Appreciate your membership, my guy, Sean Hawk. Uh, got one uh, super chat from Alex Kurz. Thank you for the super chat, Alex Kurz. Greatly appreciate you. Writes, hey, Lou, thank you for all the great content as always. So the offense is moving. We can safely say it's not going to be anemic like last year, but where do you put it in your prediction? I think we're middle of the pack. And if we could get to middle of the pack and the defense doesn't have a significant drop-off, that, that should be what 
you would assume at least good for two more wins off of last year's total to nine, right? I mean, excuse me, again, we're not playing the level of competition we played last year. So you can't just automatically say, well, offense is, you know, 15 spots higher than it was last year. Defense is only two spots lower than it was a season ago. Hey, uh, that means you win nine games. It doesn't work that way because you're playing better offenses in general. So um, we'll see. I, I think the offense is a middle of the pack offense. You know, somewhere in between 13 and 17 is where I think they'll finish offensively this season. And if if they if they finish closer to 13 than 17, we got a hell of a chance. You know, if this defense is what we think it is, we got a hell of a shot. Um, I, I agree with you. It's not anemic, and, and we know we can move the football. It's about putting it in the end zone. I think with more game planning, more creative play calling, more usage of some of our players, and getting Curtis Samuel back in the mix, all of that stuff will help this offense immensely. So thank you for the super chat, Alex Kurz. Uh, got a super chat here from Gunny Man. Thank you for the super chat, Gunny Man, and tripling up. All right, I think you doubled up, actually. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, greatly appreciate you, Gunny Man, who writes... Friendly wager when Barber gets cut. I want Manny's burger on Lafayette Boulevard. He makes it. You get a veggie burger from wherever. Um, <laughs> I don't see. First of all, I don't. I'm, I don't know if I trust Manny. And Manny, they've been slinging burgers for years, so I know exactly what you're talking about. But I don't know if I. I, if I trust Manny to, to make sure my burger don't have no extra ingredients in it. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I would be willing to make a bet that Barber doesn't get cut because I don't think he's going anywhere. Uh, I really don't. So um, I would. I, Barber's a core special teamer, too. A lot of you fail to realize that. Like, Jarrett Patterson is not a core special teamer. Peyton Barber is. And if you're going to make the team as one of the final backs – you have to be a core special teamer. So Barber checks off that box. And again, Barber has a significant role on this roster. I don't know why you guys just don't see that. I don't know why you guys want to run him out of town so so badly. But um, I don't know. We'll see. I, I, I can't explain it. You guys are hilarious when it comes to Peyton Barber. And I, I just don't understand why you guys can't see the true value that that man brings to our roster. You know, you get the new shiny toy and you guys don't want to play with the old toy. It's almost like Jarrett Patterson is Buzz Lightyear and Peyton Barber's Woody. And now that you have Buzz Lightyear, you're like, I don't need Woody anymore. So now Woody's on the floor. He's under the bed. You know, the dog's got him in his mouth. And Buzz Lightyear sleeping in the bed with y'all nice and comfy under the sheets. I, I just don't understand why y'all don't want to play with Woody no more, man. Pause. Anyway, I digress. Uh, that's going to do it for me. Uh, your man, Louis T. Landry Baldwin with another super chat. Uh, double up. Uh, uh. Landry, you're wrong, bro. You're wrong. Landry Baldwin says, Louis, don't like JP. You're wrong, man. I got nothing against him. I really like this guy. I don't know why you can't see that. Um, metaphor thank you for the super chat greatly appreciate you my guy metaphor writes yo i'm late busy at work sims cut what what yeah why uh they had to go ahead and move on man i mean he wasn't going to make the football team ron said look he wasn't going to make this team so why you know delay the the process and, and delay the inevitable let's let this man latch on somewhere else let him have an opportunity to maybe make a team and, and get a full season's guaranteed paycheck you know, the sooner the better. He's not making his squad, so let him see if he can make somebody else's squad. So, anyway, I digress. Got another member before we get out of here. King of the North, thank you for your membership and becoming a member of the Mob Squad. Stand up, King of the North. You are definitely in the building and a member of the Mob Squad. Appreciate you, King of the the north so that's gonna do it for me your man louis t just wanted to come here with a quick video it lasted a lot longer than i thought it was going to last a whole hour did not envision that but that's that's all off the strength of you guys being who you are and showing so much love so really do appreciate you guys for showing up on a random monday at a random time with a football game actually on right now 
and still coming and kicking it with me, your man, Louis T. I am a Washington fan, etched in burgundy and gold. My Washington spirit will never die. Washington spirit will never fold until we meet again. Hail to our beloved Washington football team. Uh, we will be live Wednesday night. There will be a video tomorrow, two videos, as a matter of fact, uh, of Washington variety for you guys to consume. Uh, one for the the, the two uh, tickets that I'll be giving away to the Ravens game. And then, of course, an update video on practice and what was said after practice. So be on the lookout for both of those tomorrow. And um, anything else under the sun, we'll talk about that on Wednesday live on the program. So that's going to do it with me, your man, Louis T. Until next time, you guys, have a good one. I'll be on live later tonight after Monday Night Football for the Louis T Network podcast. So again, if you're interested, come stop by and kick it with the kid later on tonight. But until then, go enjoy the rest of Monday Night Football. Sorry that I even interrupted that. And I will get it, you guys, tomorrow. Or tonight, depending on if you're going to come and chop it up with me later. In, in any event, you guys, have a good one. Take care. Louis T Network.